You say that the advantage of HELOC is that it is a reserve of money that can be used in case of emergencies. Again, fair enough. All right, so he's conceding that point. However, the cost of this reserve is quite high. Again, over $5,000 just for the first year. That's He's referring to this specific video. I don't know if that number is accurate, but if the person needs such a reserve and there is nothing keeping them from having a HELOC, not using it except for emergencies and instead paying extra on the mortgage and thus saving the extra interest due on the HELOC. Note if the person uses the reserve that increases his interest cost, his total debt, and therefore delays the eventual repayment of his HELOC slash mortgage. I have to jump in here. It's like, okay, increasing his interest costs. Well, compared to what? But what if I use that HELOC to buy an investment property? I'm increasing my interest costs, but you can't look at that in isolation. What if I'm increasing my interest costs because I pull from my HELOC and I buy an investment property that now gives me cash flow? And so now I'm coming out way ahead. You can't look at just one thing in isolation. Right. Another advantage you cite for the HELOC is automation. Well, it is possible to automate extra mortgage payments as well, but in any case, an extra mortgage payment is an operation to be done once a month, which requires just a few minutes, so it is not that complicated. And if you miss a month of extra payment, it is not a big deal. It would just cost you about $10 of interest for that month. So I don't know, is there is there anything you want to respond to there, Denzel? Yeah, absolutely. So looking at, let's discuss the the other in that example there where it's like the increasing the HELOC cost, increasing my cost for having a reserve, right? Mm -hmm. What we're not saying, what I, what I, where I think people get lost is if you have savings, then you have savings. I'm not taking away from anyone that says has savings. Let's say you, you have three to six months, whereas most Americans don't. Let's say you do, you have three to six months worth of expenses, but but a life event occurs that would drain your savings. Right. And once again, life events only happen to people who are doing velocity banking. Right. It never happens to anybody else. And exactly. So let's say there's a life event that occurs and you need more capital and you ran out of savings and you have investment account, you have your normal income coming in and you have your whatever your positive cash flow is. Let's say this life event drains your, your savings. It's draining your cash flow. You now need money. Like you need money now. Either you're going to pull from your retirement account capital, 10K, 15K, 20K, whatever it is. Let's do in $1,000 increments. Okay. Uh, what, what state are you in? Virginia right Virginia. now. Virginia. Let's look up income tax rate in Virginia. What is the tax rate in 2024? Federal, so let's see. Virginia state income tax range from 2 to 5.75%. So that's, and then what would be the total? Probably got to go to IRS, right? Tax rate. So for a single taxpayer, 22% around 44,000, 24% at 95, 32 at 182. Let's say when you factor in state, federal, da da da, all the tax together, we're at around 30%, okay? So on every 1,000 that we pull out of the um, retirement account, there's two things that happen. You stop compounding on whatever you withdrew. And, and Let's that say, cost never, never stops. <laughs> Correct. So let's say you, you were compounding at 9%. You withdraw 1,000. For every 1,000, you're going to have a 30% hit. That's $300. Law, you, have to, you have a cost of 300 to pull 1,000 out of this retirement account. You lost 9% compounding. So you missed out on $90. Year so, one. Year one. So that's one whole year, $390 for every thousand. 8.5% prime HELOC rate right now. Could be higher, could be lower. Prime is eight and a half. I take a thousand out over one year, I just pay $85. I kept my 90. Yep. So however many more thousands I pull, that number increases obviously. Obviously this number increases, but it costs less to borrow than it does for the 65 year old, the 59 year old, the retired yep. person to pull from here, right? so important this is such an important point, this right? blew my mind like, when i discovered everyone's this, like yeah oh i don't want to borrow because it costs me money and interest it's the seen versus the unseen Correct. one of the things i love again the intangible benefits right about velocity banking and infinite banking is it turns a hidden cost into a visible cost i would argue there's a tangible psychological benefit to the fact that you see 
the interest you pay on a policy loan when you borrow against whole life. You see the interest you pay on a HELOC. So you can see and you can measure your costs and you feel the pain of it, which is good. Whereas when you pull from an investment account or you pay cash for something rather than borrowing, you're, there's still a lot of other costs, but they're now hidden. And so you're not seeing, well, what could I have earned on that money uh -huh. if I had just saved it? And maybe I'm just earning 4%. Well, 4% compounded over a few years is not an insignificant chunk of change, right? So velocity banking allows you to keep your compounding money compounding and not interrupt it. Correct. And this example here of paying $85 assumes the user took a thousand and did nothing, right? Right. No velocity. Right. When you right. when you add velocity banking in here, the person that takes a thousand out of their HELOC, however many thousands we take out, say it's 10,000, 15,000, whatever it is, uh -huh. they're still making money. They still have expenses. They still have cash flow. So when all of that gets parked into the HELOC, we now reduce 85 to maybe in the 40 to 60 cost range per month or less, depending on how much we pulled out. But you can cut your eight and a half can be cut to four, to three, to five in net interest for the year, however long we, we go. And then when you allowed your money to keep compounding, you could even strategically run the math to say, okay, if I'm compounding at nine at this and it's this number, and if I can keep my costs below what I'm earning over here, then it's as if, it's as if I didn't, it didn't cost me anything. It's as if it, there was a cost. You'll see it extract right. out of your account, but it's as right. if I recaptured it over over here by not stopping the compounding event. And then and then the life event is over, right? It's done. And when it came to borrowing, where most people will borrow in the event they need money, where do they typically pull from? Their credit card, and they don't know how to use it properly, or they get a loan from Prosper, Lending Tree. It's whoever. And what if you what if you can't qualify? Mailbox. Like exactly. people assume they can just they can just get it. Well, if you're dealing with a negative life event, you may not be credit worthy. Maybe you lost your job. You have yep. no income. How are you going to qualify for a line of credit? Yep. You need to secure those debt instruments while times are good. Yes. Because as the saying goes, a bank is a place that will give you a loan once you prove you don't need it. Right. Yeah. So. To get access to those debt instruments while times are good, while you have income and you're credit worthy, because then when times are bad, you'll have access, you'll have secured your access already, um, and you may not be able to qualify. And the same thing is true with whole life insurance, by the way, with infinite banking. Right. Take out a convertible term policy for your full human life value with a company that has a competitive whole life product and do it yesterday. Denzel, how would you feel living in a $3 million home if you made $100,000 a year and you had no homeowner's insurance? Yeah, not good. Not going to feel good at all. So if you're going to fully insure your house and you're going to fully insure your car, don't you think you should fully insure your life? Like what's more important to your family? Absolutely. I'd rather... I rather have it, not need it, need it, you know, need it. Right. And, and it needs to, to be, it. the, the right. point I is, the it needs to be, space. yeah, exactly. It needs to be a convertible term policy because that protects your insurability. Uh -huh. If you just have standard term, let's say you're five years into a 10 year term policy and you have some health event happen. Okay. Or maybe a health event happens to one of your family members. That'll affect your rating. Right. Yeah. And now you can't get life insurance anymore. Now uh, you, your term expires and that's it. You have no options. Getting back to that word, optionality. Mm -hmm. If you have convertible term policy, you have options. Five years in, something happens to your health, you still have the guaranteed right to convert that to permanent coverage. I know I'm changing subjects, <laughs> but well, I think there's, there's always it. an analogy, right? There's yeah. a parallel. And I'm trying to tie it back to velocity banking to that point of, of self-insuring in a way a HELOC by leveraging debt, which debt is tax free, you could make the the connection. Not only is it tax free, it's tax deductible in some cases too. Yes. You can make the connection there to say that I'm I'm insuring my compounding by having access to these debt tools. So I insure my home, it. I insure my car, I insure my life. Let's say you do all these things. And when it comes to creating lifetime income with your retirement accounts, social security, all these different things, when those come up short, 
for a period of time and you're stuck between do I pull from a retirement account now with the risk that that money might run out later? Do I tap into my insurance, so to speak, my HELOC, mm -hmm. my debt tool as a liquidity product that only costs this much and allows my money to keep compounding at whatever rate that I'm getting and it creates an offset event? And it's as if I didn't lose in the process. And when we attach velocity banking to that pull, that draw, you pull that extra thousand out in increments, increments of when you need it, right? And you do velocity banking to quickly eliminate it, right? Even if you're running a negative cash flow, you would reduce the interest cost, right? Because money was parked for a period of time where you didn't owe a thousand for right. 15 days. It was like 800, 1100, 900. A thousand, right? It kept going up and down, up and down. Your money compounded where you needed it to be, and now you can draw, say, more from that, or you roll over that money into it, right? So you take the profits, roll it over into annuity, pays out that that gap, you know, that your Social Security pension did not cover, right? There's so much to this that we can, you know, dive into, and have so many options. It's such, yeah, yeah. man. It's such a mind blowing point. I, I agree with you. Uh, I can, I'm getting excited listening to you. There's so much we can, we can do about that because when we talk about velocity banking plus infinite banking, that's where I get so excited because those strategies are so complementary. But to return to the subject at hand before I derail this because I love infinite banking and I love talking about it. Um, 